You'll notice I'm here in the ebook. I'm on page 396, that's in section 8.1, and I'm at example 1, and I'm going to use the Java applet here. This is an animation, but it's an interactive simulation as well. And what you'll notice here is it does require Java, and so we use Firefox because we know that Firefox supports Java. Chrome does not. Uh, if you're having trouble with it loading, you may need to update your Java as well. So I'm going to click on that. It should open something that looks like this. What we have here is a few things. We have our population distribution we get to select. We are often going to be working with either a right skewed or bell shaped distribution in this course. I'll select bell shaped to start with. We also get to select two statistics to plot down here for each sample. So for each sample I'm going to measure the mean and I'm going to measure the meet, the standard deviation. I'll switch that because we don't use the median a whole lot in this course. So for each sample, I will record the mean and standard deviation and plot the results down here. Now you can see that bell-shaped distribution is our population, and we will start sampling two things about the samples. The sample size for each individual sample is two in this case. I can change that if I want to a larger sample. I also have over here the number of samples that I'm taking. Either I can sample one at a time, um, I can take five samples at a time, or I can do a thousand at a time. So let's just see how this plays out. If I take five samples, each sample is size two, what you'll see is there's first sample, the second sample, the third. For each one of those, I'm measuring a mean and a standard deviation. So there are my five samples. So each sample has a mean, and when you take all those means combined, you get a distribution of those sample means. So this marker right here is the mean of the sample means. And that red marker is the median of the sample means. Now down here, the green marker is the mean of the standard deviations. The red marker is the median, median of the standard deviations. So, and we see those measures over here as well. So the collection of sample means has a distribution that's called the sampling distribution of the sample means. The collection of sample standard deviations has its own distribution. That's the sampling distribution of the standard deviation. Now you'll notice here we of course sampled a thou or we sampled five times with a sample size of two. Let's go ahead and sample a thousand more times so you can see what happens with a lot of samples. So you notice that our sample means do have that nice symmetric distribution. Standard deviations in this case have nice skewed distribution. Sample standard deviations will often have a skewed distribution, um, but sample means will typically, for small samples, there the sampling distribution of the sample mean will often follow the population distribution. For larger sample sizes, let's say we 30 is our you know our typical distribution or our typical large sample size. So for a sample size of 30, let's go ahead and sample a thousand times. You'll notice that we still have a symmetric sampling distribution for sample means, but you notice that the standard deviation of sample means is much lower. That's the standard error of the mean. So down here what we see is that as we increase sample size, that distribution of sample means is narrowing to a much tighter bell curve. So still symmetric with the same mean as the population, but much narrower. So that's with a large sample size and a bell-shaped population distribution. Let's see what happens if we switch to a right-skewed distribution. So again, small sample size. Let's do a thousand samples. You'll notice that with a small sample size, the sampling distribution of the sample mean is skewed similar to the population. If we increase our sample size to 15, 
and again sample a thousand times, you'll notice that we're getting more symmetric, but we're still seeing just a bit of that right skew. If we increase our sample size to 30, and again sample a thousand times, you'll notice that we're nearly eliminating that right skew. So this is what's called the central limit theorem. This um, what we're demonstrating here is that as we increase the sample size past a certain threshold, that regardless of the population distribution, we can count on the sampling distribution of the sample mean to approach a bell-shaped symmetric distribution. So the central limit theorem says that the larger the sample size, the less effect that population distribution skew will have on the sampling distribution. So that's just a quick demonstration. You can play with this all you want. There are instructions down below, so I hope you get in there and try this out a little bit. It's kind of interesting to, um, to just play around with it a bit.